Hey everyone, you were Tesla Tom, and thanks so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel, where I discuss Tesla, electric vehicles, and renewable energy. If this is your first time to my channel, then hello and welcome. Take a moment to hit that red subscribe button, that way you stay informed of any new content, and it also helps my channel to grow, and also other fans to find us as well. Today we're going to discuss our latest electricity bill here in Sydney, Australia over autumn in 2021, taking into account our solar array 8.4 kilowatt system and also a Tesla Powerwall 2 with 13.5 kilowatt hour capacity. So stick around, we're going to do all that right after this. Welcome back guys, just a little bit about myself, just to remind you guys, I live in a family of four in Sydney, Australia. We've got a pool which runs a pool pump between two to four hours per day, depending which time of year it is. We've got an 8.4 kilowatt solar array and a 13.5 kilowatt hour Tesla Powerwall 2. And we also have two electric cars, a Tesla Model 3 and also a Tesla Model S. Okay, so here's a snapshot from our latest electricity bill between the 2nd of February 2021 and the 2nd of May 2021, a 90-day period. How does my house compare with other homes in my area? You can see from this blue graphic, my home used 232 kilowatt hours, which is less than a single person household in my area. So average usage data is supplied by the Australian Energy Regulator based on homes in your area during autumn. And a quick snapshot here, the average daily cost of this power bill was 59 cents per day. Average usage was 2.58 kilowatt hours compared to same time last year, 2.41 kilowatt hours. So just a little bit more than last year at the same time. And this little snapshot here is the graph over the last 12 months. So as you can see here, our household tends to use the most electricity during the winter months of the year. So between sort of May, June, July. And then over the summer months, not much at all, because we generally don't use the air conditioning much in summer, whereas in winter we do use a little bit of heating here in Sydney, particularly overnight. Bill overview. Balance brought forward $11.85 in credit, new charges $52.86, leaving $41.01, and discounted amount if paid by the due date $28.52, due date 21st of May 2021. Okay, so let's break it down. So we've got a time of use plan here for my household. We've got a peak period, off peak period, shoulder, controlled load two, and also a supply charge. So what does that all mean? So peak period is between 2 and 8 p.m. every weekday. Off peak is between 10 p.m. and 7 a.m. every single day. And shoulder is every other time in between. Controlled load is what my hot water used to be on. And I'll explain why I don't use that anymore. And the supply charge is a daily charge, of course. Now, I've got two electric cars, as I said before, and their usage is actually not included in this bill because they're separately metered on the electric car plan, which I've got, which I pay for $1 per day to charge my cars, which I'm very lucky to have. That's been grandfathered in so far. So very lucky. Of course, that plan is no longer available, unfortunately. But let's have a look at this bill for my household. So peak period between 2 to 8 p.m. on a weekday. 21.98 kilowatt hours, 53.9 cents per kilowatt hour. A little bit high, I know, but luckily I don't use much of that at all. That really does equate to about 0.2 kilowatt hour per day, so not very much at all. Total amount $11.85 for a 90-day period. Off-peak, 106.699 kilowatt hours at a price of 14.95 cents. $15.95 and most of this usage is probably due to the dishwasher and maybe even a tiny bit of heating towards the end of April the start of May at the end of this bill period. Shoulder 103.722 kilowatt hours price 22.95 cents per kilowatt hour $23.80. Controlled load 2 like I said this is what our hot water system used to be on uh, and now I've actually put our sand and heat pump during the day, so that way whatever electricity the heat pump uses, which is about two to three kilowatt hours per day over the course of the year, is now covered by the sun using our solar panels, which is great. As a result, our controlled load two is now zero kilowatt hours and hence zero dollars zero cents for controlled load two. Supply charge of 96 cents per day, so that's $86.40. And interestingly enough, that's actually the highest component of this bill now. Uh, and the total charges is now $138, that's before solar, which we'll get into now. 
There's two segments of this bill for the feed-in tariff, I'll explain why in a second. The first one is 704.189 kilowatt hours fed back to the grid. Second segment of 457.702 kilowatt hours fed back to the grid. The first lot is at 9.5 cents, the second lot is at 7 cents. Why the difference? Let's have a look at the box up here. Changes to your retailer's solar feed-in tariff. From the 1st of April 2021, your retailer's solar feed-in tariff has decreased from 9.5 cents to 7 cents. And that is unfortunately probably going to be the trend moving forward for solar feed-in tariff. I think as there is more solar uptake in Australia, we'll see our solar feed-in tariff probably drop over the next few years, possibly making a battery more appealing as that drop in solar feed-in tariff continues to slide over time. But for this bill, I received 98.94 cents in credit, taking that away from the electricity usage, which means that I was charged $39.06 with a GST component, which is 10% here in Australia, of $13.80, uh, which is 10% of this figure here, making the total due $41.01. If I pay on time, I get a massive discount, bringing it down to $28.52. Let's have a look at a running 12 month total. So as you can see over the last four power bills, over the last 12 months, winter by far and away has been the most expensive. May to August 2020 last year, $358.85. The next cycle was in spring between August and November 2020, $60.05. In summer between November and February, it was minus $11.85. Nice to get a credit in summer. And then this bill in autumn, February to May 2021, $28.52, making the total for the last 12 months for my household is $435.57. So of course, I tend to do a yearly roundup and payback update for my Tesla Powerwall 2, and it's good to see that this figure is keeping consistent basically with previous years, which is great. How does this bill compare to last autumn? Well, between February and May 2020, $104.84. Uh, between February and May 2021, this time $28.52, so a big drop there. But I think a lot of that is actually due to my AGO electric car plan. Uh, for some reason, they have not added the electric car $1 a day to this bill. Uh, for some reason, I'm sure they will add it eventually. Uh, but I think that accounts probably for most of the difference, uh, that $90 -odd difference. And just to show you guys quickly this graphic from the AGL app, it gives you a nice indication of uh, the proportion of solar against how much is used from the grid during this cycle. And as you can see, there's far more yellow on the left-hand side, which is the solar production for my household, compared to the right-hand side, which is from the grid. As you can see, this period here, I believe this was during the heavy rainfall in Sydney we received, uh, where some homes were unfortunately flooded. Uh, so there's quite a bit of rain there, and of course when there's rain, there's not much sunshine, which means that there must be some pulled from the grid. And then there's another rainy day there where there's quite a bit from the grid and not much from the sun. So that kind of makes sense and tells you that we sold to the grid $98.93 worth, total usage of 56.76, 1,162 kilowatt hours of solar energy produced. We used 232 kilowatt hours from the grid. So it's good to know that during this autumn period that we produce far more solar than we use from the grid, which is always nice to know. Okay, so that's my power bill. Now the second part of this video, I just wanna show you guys a video that was sent to me by a couple of young fans from Tasmania. You might have seen their earlier work where they did a parody video of uh, Tesla Tom in Tasmania, where they basically did a software update of their car uh, in a paddock in Tasmania. Well, these boys are at it again, uh, the same two young lads from Tasmania. And this time around, they've told me they've really gone all out. They've even got some drone footage, so I'm really looking forward to seeing this. By the way, I've not seen this before, so this will be my first reaction to this video. Let's go through it. Hello, everybody. Tesla Tom here. <laughs> Welcome back to Ludicrous Food. Ah, uh, the Tesla logo. If you logo. Are new around here, please make sure to hit that red subscribe button to make sure Always you hit don't that subscribe. any new uploads. Oh, and FSD Beta. FSD Beta. Today we will be showcasing a brand new software update. Yep. Very lucky to get the chance to use this one. This one is in my um, Red Model 3 <laughs> Stealth Performance 2019. Yeah. Nice. So let's get into it right after this. <laughs> Down to a T. I love it. Love it. Right, so what I'm going to do is. I'm going to turn on autopilot here. So this is the full self-driving beta update. Finally comes to Australia in beautiful yes. right-hand drive. You guys got it before me. Right here. And the car I love is how off. they got the noise. How good is that? 
see the wheel moving there. See whether I can do this in a section. <laughs> so the software isn't finished. Um, I'm still required to sit here and be ready to take over at any time. Safety but first. That did that magically. Right here, it's just taking off. Ah, oh, good acceleration, boys. On the steering wheel just to make sure it doesn't do anything weird. Safety first. Can Always hang to that wheel. Turn? It's doing turns. Wow. It's better wow, than my car. Wow, wow. Indicating for a little while, so I'm going to switch that one off myself. <laughs> Still got some bugs there. Do on regular autopilot on the last video. It stops here, indicates, which it doesn't need to because it's not an intersection, but useful to do, I suppose. So I'm going to hit that report button right up there. To make sure that Tesla knows that that's not meant to do that. <laughs> and it did that turn perfectly. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take over. Oh, well, okay, it's gone off. And I'm going to get my um, DJI drone out. And I'm oh. going to start oh, recording yeah. the car. The drone. I look forward to this. And we'll see how it goes from a bit of a bird's eye view. Yeah. I don't have a drone. All right, so here we are. Oh, Got yes. to drive here. Going to take off manually. And there we nice. go. There's our double tap. Vigil is now in autopilot. <laughs> look quite happy there. Got my lovely assistant there flying the drone. She's good. <laughs> Got another shot here. So it's going to pull out from the left. That's awesome. Comes out onto the road nicely. Autopilot yes. all active. Keeps the lane very well. Oh, I love the hands behind the head. To the left. Then That's too funny. Left turn. So we've got another left turn scenario. Looks a little bit timid here oh, with his movement stopping good for basically no reason. Demonstration. Great Turning demonstration. Here, nice and slowly. Maybe I should get a drone. Turns just far enough, keeping its lane pretty well centered. Good turning. And then goes flat out once the crew sets it properly. Look at, look at all that land. Up there. Wow, good following there. Okay, so here's oh, our second higher. shot here. Just going to take off here. Wow. The pilot is enabled. So we can see Ooh. it just readjusting. Nice veggie patch lane there. Perfectly. Turns a little bit early there for my liking, but... You guys have so much, so much land. Unsafe. Turn that corner there nice and hard. Yeah, good turn. A little bit wide, but that's how everyone drives. Hyperfest. Hope, hope Down the straight <laughs> here. Drives. Just keeping its lane securely. Hyperfest like beater does come to Australia. And here's where the tricky part will come in. Slows down nicely, indicating to the right. Checking for traffic. Turning nice. right here. Does a perfect turn there. And interestingly enough, it actually starts heading towards the ditch. <laughs> and I had to take over, unfortunately. <laughs> System's back on now. Not sure why it did that back there. Turns that corner perfectly. It does happen. And yeah, doing a great job. Nice work. Alright guys. Oh, back in the car. So that was the drone footage being reviewed there. Did Great. An absolutely awesome job. Had two autopilot brakes on this video. We'll see where we can get that down to zero next one. So I was just navigating through here pretty well. Paul. So oh, I took autopilot it back there. on. I'm gonna report that one up there. So I took over. <laughs> Press the report button again. A little bit too close to the fence there. Wanna make sure that nothing no damage happens to my car. Absolutely. Yeah, so Always I'll played safe. Back on here. There we go. <laughs> Double tap. Perfect job. Just Watch that ditch. Gonna indicate through here. I would have gone a little bit slower by myself, but anyway, it doesn't hurt. Oh, nice, it's a twilight too. Overall, the golden hour. Magnificent job. So we'll hope to see some less autopilot breaks in the next video. Hopefully, in the next update. Hope so too. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers. Oh wow, that was too good. Very good. Thank you boys, I really enjoyed that. That was really, really quite funny. Um, so thank you again and uh, make sure you follow them on Twitter and also uh, their YouTube channel as well. I'll leave them in the description below for you guys to check out and follow. And thanks for saying that in. Really, really enjoyed that. All right, guys, I will also sign off myself as well. Hope you enjoyed the breakdown of my latest uh, electricity bill and also enjoyed our little uh, parody video of um, <laughs> Tesla Tom in Tasmania from our two young fans uh, from the Apple Isle. All right, guys, stay safe. Until the next time, happy charging.